Welcome back to another segment of La Plática with Dr. Jose Leiva. Today we're bringing you this program thanks to Latino USA TV and Arizona Barrio Stories where we try to capture the pulse of our community to, through the lens of great leaders that we have been interviewing and people that live and grew up in our barrios here in Phoenix. Today I'm really honored to have Dr. Luis Olivas or Dr. O as he's well known who has mentored so many uh, individuals that are now in corporate business, small business, and contributing to this economy. He's an icon, highly respected, was offering datos on uh, the demographics of Latinos back in the day, wasn't very popular, and I know that we at, at first, only the Latino venues were hearing you, but then everybody started hearing him. So welcome, Dr. O, how are you today? Muchas gracias, muy bienvenidos a todos. Doing fabulous. Good, good. I like to tell people I'm living the dream. <laughs> That's great. Well, he's done so many things in his life. In addition to being an ASU, he's also in the National Guard. Uh, he's been a great contributing member of uh, the Post 41 uh, Legion here in Phoenix. But tell us about growing up here in the Vargas in Phoenix. What was that like and what did you learn? Wow, what, what a journey. Um, I'm a fifth generation okay. Phoenician, born and raised in Phoenix. And if you know anything about our history, we didn't become a state until 1912. Right. So people often say, well, how can you be a fifth generation? I like to tell people, my family was here before the border crossed us. Exactly. exactly. And so it's been a very rich, enriching environment mm -hmm. growing up in our body and our community. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on 3rd Street and Lincoln. Okay. Two blocks north of La Marqueta. Right. So we were never um, empty for fruit and vegetables. It was an easy reach across the fence to get help yourself to some free fruit, free vegetables. Uh, and that added to your diet, needless to say, but exciting times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Central Park, Grand Park, where I learned how to swim. And it evolved, it evolved sure. as such. Wow, well that's fascinating that here you have such humble beginning, beginnings, right? And then you become a leader in education here in the state and the country. So what, what was it about your upbringing or your parents that motivated you to get an education? Because you also are a veteran, so how did you combine those two? My parents? Mm -hmm. My dad retired from the city of Phoenix as a driver of a garbage truck. Okay. And he insisted on the discipline of getting up early and going to work or in his case, for us, going to school. Mm -hmm. And so that led, in essence, to why go to school, um, propagated by my mom, mm -hmm. who insisted your only way out and to succeed, that you won't have to drive a truck, and there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with truck drivers. Right. But she saw a lot in us, and encouraged her, us, if you may, reading, with her, mm -hmm. reading for her, okay, and eventually she had a beautiful script signature teaching us how to write. Mm -hmm. And so it started in, in the home, mm -hmm. it evolved, strong representation from parents who never had that education. Correct. My dad was a third grade education, my mom was eighth grade, she claimed she had the GED, but my tia Armida, her sister was saying, Bustera, she doesn't have a GED. <laughs> but, Needless to say, that's where the championship came out right. in education. Uh, fabulous teachers, fabulous coaches, and evolving then into when I went into high school. Um, You're Ms. a Phoenix Junior, correct? Phoenix Junior High School, 7th Street and Van Buren when it existed. Miss um, Cole was my history teacher, mm -hmm. and I just loved the way she introduced everything, mm -hmm. got us going. It just wasn't sitting there and reading, mm -hmm. it was discussing the history. Mm -hmm. And back then I knew I wanted to be a teacher, wanted to be an educator. So when I graduated in, the, in the 1965, mm -hmm. 899 seniors graduating in the class of 65. Mm -hmm. I knew a handful of them. Right. And then I had that opportunity to go directly into Arizona State University as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, the, mo the majority of the students that I went to school with and friends and compadres, comadres, mm -hmm. started at the community college, mm -hmm. PC, the right. Poor People's College, we used to call it Phoenix College. Right. So it evolved into being an educator, mm -hmm. knowing the segments of education, what it's about, and how it helps our community. And then seeing the leaders in our community right. and asking the question, why aren't there more people in the city council that look like us, that speak mm -hmm. like us, than mm -hmm. el español? Why aren't there more police officers, mm -hmm. more firefighters, more medical doctors, mm -hmm. and so forth? So it was that evolution okay. in, in the early 60s 
And in 65, I find myself as a freshman at Arizona State University, going into business. Now, you must have faced a lot of challenges because, first of all, most of the Latinos that I know of at that age, that era, were pushed into education, sociology, psychology. So to be in business, I'm sure you faced obstacles that help you then see the vision for working with the Hispanic Business Students Association, which will, will uh, have its 50th anniversary next this coming year. My first obstacle, believe it or not, was when I was a freshman at Phoenix Union High School. My counselor, mm -hmm. Mr. Liberante was his name, said, Louis, I have everything planned out for you. You're going to go into auto mechanics. <laughs> and your sophomore, junior, senior year, you're going to work on cars. You're going to listen to radio and you're going to drive them. Right. And I remember saying, I don't want to be an auto mechanic. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, well, then what do you want to be? Mm -hmm. I said, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, then you don't need me as a counselor. <laughs> That's, that was my story. Right, right. But I had the right teachers and coaches that, that encouraged right, me then. Right. And so leading into business at the university, mm -hmm. as a business major, retail management, I discovered that where the money was, mm -hmm. you could drive a new car, you could wear a coat and tie to work. Mm -hmm. And by the time I finished my senior year, I decided that's not for me. Right. I had to work weekends, evenings when the retail stores were open, Correct. never got to see family and friends. Mm -hmm. so. Instead, I went to education mm -hmm. and never looked back. I did my student teaching at Carl Hayden High School mm -hmm. and then went to teach at Alhambra High School business subjects. Wow. That's how I stayed involved working on my master's, mm -hmm. jumping to Scottsdale Community College, the first and the youngest Latino I'm sure. in the Maricopa College just teaching business. Mm -hmm. Leaving there, working in a financial institution mm -hmm. called Western mm -hmm. Savings and mm -hmm. Loan as a director of executive development and training. Completed my master's, my doctorate, and eventually went to work with the city of Phoenix mm -hmm. as a training administrator and then recruited to ASU in 1979 to be a director of the Center for Executive Development in the College of Business mm -hmm. and a professor in business, mm -hmm. working your way through. Well, tell me, I hear so many students out there when they call you Dr. O, it's not only con respeto, pero con mucho amor, cariño because you have nurtured so many of these individuals. How, where did that come from and what satisfaction do you derive from that? Um, fascinated experience. I put myself back in 1979 mm -hmm. and I'm assistant professor in the College of Business. There's a lady, uh, Professor Nelda Garcia was her name. Mm -hmm. One day walked into my office, my first year, she said, Sígame, mm -hmm. Wh where are we going? We're going to a meeting. And so we went to this meeting, and there were four or five Hispanic Mexicano mm -hmm. students. Back then, we were Mexican. Sure. So there were five Mexican students there. And um, she introduced me as the co advisor to the Hispanic <laughs> Business Students Association. So you kind of meeting. volunteered, right? You yeah. volunteered. And so two, two years later, she leaves to go to the University of Texas at Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I became the advisor of HBSA. Wow fascinating experience because now you're interacting with this incredibly talented uh, community mm -hmm. of students, mm -hmm. now Hispanic students, uh, whose desires are wishing was to get into business, mm -hmm. going to graduate schools, going into a PhD program, and right. then becoming someday the medical doctors that we now know today, dentists, mm -hmm. restaurant owners, bar mm -hmm. owners, mm -hmm. becoming attorneys. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like fulfilling my corazón by walking into an environment where I recognize the students, they recognize me, mm -hmm. and we get to share where are you, mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, as an ed educator, you all know, uh, there's nothing like it. It's right. not in the pocketbook, right. but it's what you feel in the alma. Right. About what, it, what, what is it like really to be an educator? Mm -hmm. And I still consider it a sacred privilege to be an educator, to intersect the lives of all these students that we get to work with. Well, and I think that's something what we're trying to do here at Arizona Barrio Stories is uh, La Platica is all about education. And so to have such humble uh, leaders that face those challenges and, and still are giving back today, even though you're retired, tell me about, as we close, what your final goal or legacy you may want that to be. I'm still on that journey. Okay. We're celebrating the 50th anniversary of HBSA mm -hmm. this April, and where we're gathering 
400 of our alum, mm -hmm. of past presidents, mm -hmm. where they've been, where they're at, and how they're leaders now in community, serving as presidents of community-based organizations, okay. as business owners. And still, it's a, it's a ride that's incredible. Uh, one of the most humbling experiences, mm -hmm. last year I was notified that the College of Business was Correct. creating, in my name, right. the Dr. O, mm -hmm. doc, Dr. Lou will leave us endowed chair. Right. So there's now an endowed chair that has been created, um, my name, uh, and the first person sitting in that adult chair, her name is Veronica Vienna. She's mm -hmm. a professor of supply chain. Mm -hmm. And that's the ultimate of recognitions right. that anyone can imagine as, as a professor. Mm -hmm. And so having served in the military in the Air National mm -hmm. Guard, mm -hmm. now a member of American Legion Post 41, mm -hmm. an active member, helping with fundraising events, serving as the president of the Victoria Foundation, mm -hmm. the Pete mm -hmm. Seeger Correct. Victoria Foundation, and providing scholarship to students. So it's an evolving journey. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, and as I keep telling my students, and I remember, to, I continue to tell myself, I'm not there yet. Right. And so there's so much to do in our community. Thank you for this grand opportunity to share my experiences about what it's like mm -hmm. as a fifth generation Phoenician mm -hmm. and as an educator still on his journey. Right. Well, thank you, Dr. O. This is Dr. Jose Leiba with a special journey. I think we're all on that journey and I would encourage us educators to continue the legacy of this individual that we love and respect here in Arizona. Once again, Jose Leiba, hasta pronto. Till next time. Thank you very much.